What's up guys, Mr. Chris here with infotainment.com. We're back with our 2017 Toyota Tacoma. This time we're doing a little bit different of a video install series for you. Uh, we're gonna try and get this video series done in three parts because we're doing so many different upgrades to the interior of our Tacoma. We're gonna be getting into the radio, the speaker upgrade, and uh, a few other upgrades for you. Let's get into what I'm gonna be installing. All right, so getting into the first part of our video series, we're gonna try and get the radio upgraded. We have our two different types of Entune 3 radios here. We're also gonna try and get a wireless charger added in as well. Moving forward to our part two, we partnered with OEM Audio Plus. Once again, if you watched our Jeep upgrade video or build out series, uh, we did a full install on the OEM Audio Plus uh, speaker system. They were nice enough to help us out with another system for our Tacoma. So we're going to be doing that. And also we have the single subwoofer system here. They do offer a dual subwoofer system for a Tacoma. So if you want more bass, um, check them out. They have really nice equipment. And then lastly, we have a bunch of SEM uh, dyes. They used to be called dyes, but these are SEM paints. We're going to be converting our caramel or that brownish uh, saddlebag color uh, interior panels to black. We're going to black everything out just like on the TRD Pro models um, and we have all the tools that we need for these installs. Uh, so let's get into the first install or upgrade which is going to be the Entune 3.0 radio install. All right so like I said we're going to start with the radio upgrade in our truck and uh, our truck has the base radio um, but it does have the apps button, so uh, we should have a factory GPS antenna installed. Here's the two radios that we currently offer for the 2017 Tacoma. Basically, they're both Entune 3 radios, um, so they have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. But the premium version has uh, navigation built in. So that's the version that I'm going to be installing today. Basically, this is the easiest install of all the interior insoles that we're gonna do. You just have this radio bezel here that pulls off. Pull it straight back. Actually, because our radio screens that we're gonna be installing are bigger than our current radio bezel, we have the upgraded bezel that we're gonna be swapping in as well when we put that radio back in. Now you can see it has a bigger um, bigger opening for our new screen. We'll set this aside and that will not be used again. And here's our radio, it says held in with four 10 millimeter bolts. We'll go ahead and pull those out. And once you get the bolts out, pull your radio out and disconnect all your connectors here. It's just a bunch of uh, bunch of little clips, you press the top in and pull the connectors out of the back of the radio. There is a separate module underneath our radio that has some wires connecting to the, the main radio unit here. You don't have to remove those. As you can see, those can stay attached and you can pull the whole radio out. All we need from this are the factory brackets that are holding uh, this radio on. So we'll pull these off and we'll transfer that over to our new radio. To remove these, they're actually eight millimeter bolts, but they do have a Phillips bit in the center of them. I don't like to use the Phillips because they tend to strip out. Um, so I grabbed a eight millimeter socket to pull these off. All right, once you get that off, you keep it in the same orientation that you pulled it off in. And when you place it on the side of the radio, the new radio, 
you'll see everything lines up. There's actually little indentations on the bracket itself that'll fall into place and it'll keep it from wiggling around. That's how you know you found uh, the right screw hole orientation. And we'll use those same, same bolts to reinstall the bracket. Right, we'll flip it over and do the same thing for the other side. All right, and that's all you basically need to do to the radio. All right, now that we got our brackets swapped over to the new radio, uh, we'll go ahead and pull our XM or satellite radio module off and swap that over as well. And we'll slide that into the brackets. and we can plug it back in in basically the same orientation and make sure the, the holes all line up like they should before you put your eight millimeter bolts back in. All right, from here, you would simply replace all your factory plugs back into the back of the radio and reinstall the radio and put your new bezel over to complete the install. Um, if that's all you were looking for um, in this video, um, that's all you'd basically need to complete the upgrade. Uh, we're not gonna install this yet because we still have the OEM Audio Plus system that we have to install in here. So I'm gonna leave this out for now and we'll get into the wireless charger from here. All right, so as far as the wireless charger goes, um, there's a lot of hate for these online for that, uh, the OEM wireless charger. I know there's aftermarket options out there. We went with the factory wireless charger just to stick with our theme of the upgraded OEM uh, equipment on our uh, TRD Pro that we're trying to convert it into. Uh, but with that being said, uh, if you pick up a wireless charger online or uh, from a third party or something and you have the notorious bubbling on your wireless charging pad there is a fix that Toyota has for it basically this is the part number here it's 861C4-04010 and when you order that part it's usually about 40 bucks online uh, it'll give you just the pad part of the wireless charger just the part that has that bubbling um, issue so basically you would take the wireless charger that has the issue and swap over the guts onto the new piece, uh, which is very simple to do. And I'll do that now. Uh, all you need is a Phillips screwdriver, uh, number one Phillips bit. It's one of the smaller um, Phillips screws. And you'll just go ahead and remove, there's four on this main unit here. And if you look on the side here, uh, where this wire is leading out to this little circuit board here there's two more Phillips screws there and we can detach that whole thing and then lastly you have a clip uh, on the other side that's holding this connector on so we'll pull these off All right, now with all of our screws removed, you can see everything is free. All we have is this clip that has to be popped off. 
take it and you push the sides in and the clip should pop free. There we go. And that's what you should be left with. Now this piece here, you can just toss that aside, and toss that into the trash. You're not gonna need that anymore. And you reinstall the charger onto the new pad. There's some alignment pins that the new charger or the uh, old charger will slide into on the new pad here. And it's nice to have a magnetic tip so you don't have to worry about dropping these tiny screws because once you drop them, they're gone. All right, and now we have basically a brand new wireless charger here. And the only other thing you'll need for the install is the wireless charger uh, power button. So Toyota is really good about pre-wiring their trucks for additional upgrades. So all the uh, harnesses and everything that we need is already pre-installed in the truck. All we have to do is install the button and the pad. All right, so where your wireless charger is positioned in the vehicle is actually in this compartment right up here. There's nothing in ours. It's right forward of the uh, cup holders here. Um, this is the compartment that we're gonna have to swap out for our new one. So to access that, we have to pull our center console up and off, uh, which really isn't too bad. Um, basically, where you're gonna wanna start is pulling the shift knob off, which uh, this center leather boot just pops down then you can unscrew the shift knob. All right, we'll set that aside. All right, after you pull the shift knob off, you're gonna wanna open your center console and uh, remove the carpeted pad at the bottom. It's probably a good time to clean out the uh, center console. But underneath here, you have two 10 millimeter bolts that you have to pull up. So we'll do that now. And they're kind of far down there, so I'm gonna use a couple extensions on my impact. Now we'll have to pull up the uh, center console and in order to kind of pull it up and free it from the e-brake we can kind of loosen this boot up around the e-brake here we'll go ahead and pull that all the way up I'll try and wiggle this boot up a little bit so it doesn't hang up when I'm pulling it up there you go. All right. From here, you can take your center console and just kind of pull it up from the rear here. And as you lift, you have a couple wires that you can unplug underneath. You just reach your hand up in there. You'll see we have our cigarette lighter plug and on the side of the shifter here we have another plug and once you unplug those you can pull the whole center console out of the vehicle all right now that we got our center console removed uh, and out of the way we have access to the three screws that we need to remove to get this other center portion moved out as well we'll pull these out got one there one in the front of the shifter. And that last one right there. Now this panel should pull back and out. And uh, to kind of make it easier um, to reinstall that center console, we can go ahead and move the shifter out of park. Um, our e-brake is up, so we don't have to worry about it 
rolling out of the way. There is a shift uh, lock button right here that you can press down so you can manually move that shifter out of the way. And we can just pick this up and pull it out. All right, now we have access to get to the screws that we need to get to to uh, replace our panel with our uh, charging pad. All right, so with our panel removed, you can see the orientation that we need to be in. We got our panel retaining clip right at the bottom there. This is how the new one's gonna mount. It's basically these five Phillips screws we gotta pull off and we'll put this in its place. All right, make sure you line up the retaining uh, pins on there, or the alignment pins, rather. And we can go ahead and re-tighten all of our Phillips screws. All right, and you can see how that sits in there. Now all we gotta do is reinstall this into the truck. All right, now before we grab our panel and reinstall it, um, you can look right underneath this little carpeted area. Sometimes this will be taped on the side. Uh, sometimes it's taped back here. Um, but this harness right here that goes to nothing, that's actually what's gonna plug into our wireless charger. You can see it's the same plug there. So all we gotta do is, before we snap this back in, make sure that we plug in our charger. Pull that wire. Plug it in. And now we can reinstall this in the reverse order that we removed it. Snap that back in. We'll put our three screws back in. And now we're ready to reinstall our center console. All right, and before you plug, uh, or before you set your center console in place, make sure to plug the two plugs back in. You have the one up front and then the one towards the rear for your, for your power port. All right, there you go. Pull all of our boots down and clip everything back into place here. There we go. All right, now we can reinstall our two 10 millimeter bolts back in the center console. Make sure to put your pad back in as well. All right, now we can put our shift knob back in place. All right, now we're ready to install our power button for that wireless charger. It'll basically go into this empty pop-out right here. To access the pop-out right here, we're gonna have to pull the climate control out. And uh, the edge of the knee bolster panel here actually overlaps the climate control. So what we can do is just reach in there with our fingers. We should be able to pop this out just like that. And as you can see, that edge is kind of covered our panel and basically the rest of it is held in with retaining clips so once you pull that 
panel off, you just push it from the back side. That'll pop out. And uh, you don't have to remove the whole uh, climate control cluster, but I'm gonna do it so you guys can see what's, what's kind of going on in here. From this point, you can actually just reach your hand back here and press on the back side of the, uh, the knockoff plate and that'll pop free. So from this point, all you gotta do is locate the wiring that you're gonna need for the button, which just like the one down here, it's taped up on a harness back here. Here you go. You're gonna look for the one basically that fits. So now that we've identified which harness we need, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna push that through the hole from the back side and plug that in there. All right now, all we got to do is plug that in. Perfect. Now we are ready to use our wireless charger. All right, so we're going to wrap up this install from this point here. Um, if you want to see part B or the uh, continuation of this installation, come back to infotainment.com.